cancer is treatable. Yeah. But they should see the right doctor. I understand yeah. Kiswahili a little, but I'm not fluent. Yeah. So I'm normally free to tell them, please yeah. talk to me in English. I yeah. want my friends to pray for me. To bear my tempted soul above and intercede with God for me. I need the prayers of those I love. As we all are aware, October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Over the weekend, I traveled to the farmhouse where my grandmother, the matriarch, who is also a survivor, lives. For most of your life, you did not have major health concerns. But then um, in your 70s, you got diagnosed with breast cancer. So my first question to you is this. When did you first suspect that you had cancer? Actually, several years back, mm -hmm. I felt a lump, a small lump on my right breast. How several is several? How many years ago is that? I can't really tell, but I used to just to apply Vicks, mm. then it disappears. Mm. Then when it reached 19, 2019, mm -hmm. I suspected I had it. Yeah. Yeah, because now the, the lamp was big. Mm. I remember even when I went to when small took us with Mama Caroline to Mombasa, mm -hmm. I told them. Mm. But I was afraid to go for diagnosis because mm. I thought mm -hmm. it would actually now mm. become worse faster. Yeah. Because when they take the sample. Mm -hmm. So I kept it to myself. Mm. Then uh, I informed your mom and she took me for memograph at New Nyanza. Yeah. I think the result proved the, there was. Yeah. And uh, she took it to Dr. Joma. Mm -hmm. She didn't know how to break the test to you. Yes. Yeah. So Dr. Joma and my brother was also mm. accompanying me. Mm. He had been told but then i did not want to listen yeah and uh, i kept quiet yeah keeping quiet it went on yeah. and uh, early 2021 mm -hmm. it started my breast started to separate yeah in small liquid i was seeing mm. So I realized, uh, I'm not going to sit back here because this would turn into a wound. Yeah. So when I told your mom, mm -hmm. now I was preparing myself <laughs> to accept. Mm. And Dr. Juma told her to take me to another doctor. Mm. Tom Boy. Yeah. And I went there. Mm -hmm. It was so small, mm. it tried to inject it mm. and we couldn't get it mm. by the by the needle. Yeah. So he advised I go to Dr. Utieno at uh, this place at Nakumat. Yeah. So he did several things to me and uh, got the, the photograph, the yeah. paper. Yeah. He was required to take it to a lab in town. Mm. And she also connected with the chemo doctor at Agata. Mm. So the, the chemo doctor mm -hmm. advised that the lab sends it to Nairobi, mm. the sample. Yeah. So it came back that it was cancerous. Yeah. But it was difficult for any of them to break it to me. Yeah. So when I went to the doctor, I asked him, is it cancerous? So you asked the doctor yourself? Yes. Uh-huh. Because I was really suspecting it was. Yeah. 
He was a doctor three years. Mm. Which day? I asked him. Mm. He said it was still small, but because of the pair, yeah. it is stage three. Yeah. So he advised Irene to tell the the lab in town yeah. to take the sample to South Africa. Yeah. So that they could actually confirm and say how it was going to be treated. Yeah. So after ten days, the yeah. result came back. Okay, so wait, before you reach there, in that moment when you were told yes it was cancerous, what's the first thing that came to your mind? What did you first think of? How did you feel? Definitely, you know, you can't feel good. Yeah. But Pastor Honga was also there. Yeah. Uh, we went with him, with my brother, to his brother's house and your mom. Mm -hmm. We prayed for Ami. Mm -hmm. uh, after that prayer, mm. uh, he also advised, he said, now, this one is not your, this is not your war. Yeah. This is God's war. Yeah. You can't fight it yourself. Yeah. So those words of encouragement mm. gave me the encouragement. Yeah. The fear was there, but mm -hmm. the fear was there. I can't say it wasn't there. Mm. But because when I was told, I was advised it's God's war. Yeah. I say accepted that that was God's war. I could not fight it. Yeah. All right. So after ten days, the results come back from South Africa. Then what happened? No, we we went back. Mm. We went back to. After being encouraged that it was God's war, yeah. we went back to Agakan for further. I don't know what we were doing. Mm. So now, having come back from Nini, he, the chemo doctor at Agakan, mm. uh, zoomed with the chemo doctors at Agakan, Nairobi. Yeah. And they all agreed that. Uh, I was supposed to start with chemotherapy. Yeah. After I was through with chemotherapy, mm. then I go for operation. Yeah. After operation, that's when I was going to go for radiotherapy. Mm. So did your treatment process follow those exact steps? Yes. And in that treatment process, there's a story I, I had you, there's something I had you mention and I'd want you to tell us again because I found it funny. Uh, how the nurse at the hospital was speaking to you in Kiswahili and you did not understand Kiswahili. Can you like just comment on that? That one in, in Agaga? Yeah. 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 Where was it? Normally I, I understand Kiswahili a little but I'm not fluent. Yeah. So I'm normally free to tell them, please talk to me in English. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So when a nurse starts to talk to me in, in Kiswahili and I'm not, I'm not going to get everything. Yeah. She's telling me, um, I always tell them, please talk to me in English. English. Yeah. Yeah. So when I went to Nairobi, uh -huh. actually I had asked my, your mom wanted it done here, but I didn't want to be here. Yeah. So I talked to my brother and asked him to talk to his son. Yeah. To talk to the, to the wife. Mm so that she could get me the best breast cancer doctor. Yeah. So that was done. Mm. And uh, the wife had actually recommended yeah. Aga Khan University Hospital, mm. where he knew a doctor. Mm -hmm. And the name is disappearing now. It's God okay. God prepared me to forget <laughs> the details. No, it's okay. So, just the doctor, person X. Yeah. Yeah. So she had talked to this doctor, mm. Mr. Bukusu, yeah. and he was actually a, a very advanced person, even in the in the armed forces. Mm. Was now at Agaka. Mm. He was also lecturing. In Agaka, and they treat, they teach mm. masters. Yeah. So when I called, he was given my, my number. I called him and we went with Elena. Mm. And we went, I went to his, uh, his clinic mm. and they checked me. So from there, he took me to the best chemo doctor in Agaka mm. called Dr. Sitna. Mm. Gave him, gave her 
my file. Yeah. But briefly before I left, he said, this treatment, you lose your hair, mm. your nails will turn black, mm. and uh, you go for six sessions of mm. chemo. Mm. After that, so when you will be operated on after operation, mm. you go for radiotherapy. Yeah. And after radio, yeah. you will be started on uh, hormonal treatment. So it's good he told you all this. Yes. And you know, these are such heavy things to be telling someone who has been living, let's say, a normal life. Like your hair will start falling off, your nails will turn black. Like it looks like a scary road to travel. So in this moment, during this whole process i'd like to ask did you feel supported by those around you like by your family or by anyone you wanted that support from did you feel supported or is that something we because i'm part of your family could do better but i had already known because they were already volunteering to pay yeah my children had already volunteered to be paying i don't know 100,000 each something yeah. like that yeah my brother's children had opted also to pay mm. Uh, so I knew financially I would be okay Yeah. because the cancer, cancer treatment is very expensive. Very expensive. So before I went, I, I started the name. The treatment. The, the treatement, chemo. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I started the chemo. Mm -hmm. Aga Khan Hospital has got a team of doctors yeah. related to the cancer disease. Mm -hmm. So they met me, yeah. about six of them. Yeah. And they encouraged me, they talked to me. Mm -hmm. So I expected what I knew. I was expecting what they had told me what I was going to expect. Mm. After that is when now I started the name, the, the chemo treatment to Dr. Sutina. Yeah. You was given an appointment every every three weeks. Mm. You go for the chemo treatment, it's given intravenous. Mm. Then with the chemo treatment, there's a lot of reaction. Yeah. Sometimes you will be constipated so much that it cannot even pass through. Yeah. But then I was able to call the doctor to, to give me prescription mm. through the, the form. Yeah. Or I could go to the hospital and get that one. But mm. I preferred. I preferred just getting the treat the new the getting the prescription through then I go either will go and buy for me. Mm. Or she will go to a Dakan and get it. Yeah. No, death did not appear to me. Uh. I was not afraid of death. Mm. And uh, I was not seeing myself going to die. Yeah. I knew I was going to be treated, although yeah. it was difficult. Yeah. Mm, and then when I was asked whether any relative of mine died of cancer, uh -huh. I said, as much as I'm concerned, my elder sister died of cancer of the liver. Yeah but not of the breast. breast. Uh -huh. So treatment went on. It was difficult. Yeah. You lose appetite. Mm. But then the nurses there were so good. Yeah. There was a young Kikuyu nurse, a man, mm. asked me whether I take, I take, uh, I take milk. Yeah. I said yes. He said, that's very good. Mm. Continue to take milk, it will help you. Mm. And then I also talked to a friend of, 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 of ours, we are in the group of Timbuktu, mm. called Mrs. Uh, Onyero. Yeah. Mrs. Uh, Mr. Onyero had cancer of the throat. Yeah. And uh, they went through it successfully. Yeah. Also, was a nurse and was able to talk to the doctors at Kenyatta. Yeah. Even where some doctors had given up. Mm. Onyero is alive to this day, yes. many years. So, I think in your case, you have. You also have testaments of people who have lived through it and survived it. So it also ensured you held on to the hope. Because I've heard of so many people, once you see cancer, once you hear cancer, you already see death, bury yourself, and then now is when you come back to reality, like, oh, there's options of treatment, right? So um, how has cancer changed your life since you got diagnosed? What do you do different now that you know you had it? and are in the healing process or are you healed already i'm healed yes amen even the doctor had actually promised to me that i removed all the cells yeah. even the ones that were on my armpit yeah what do you call this 
this swelling you have. Right. The lymph. Wow. It had reached the lymph in the armpit. Yeah. He promised me removed everything. Yeah. And he said, Mama, you can now live for 10 years. Mm. Amen. But then living is God. Yeah. So he said, you'll continue to take the hormonal treatment, treatment mm -hmm. for five years. Yeah. Which is when we now determine whether they are it's all the cells are removed or not. Yeah. But me all along, in fact, I never felt as if I was sick because Wakina Mrs. Muma mm. were afraid to talk to me because they thought <laughs> end result of cancer is death. death. Mm. But then he said, but whenever we talk to Mama Irene, mm. she's very courageous. She talks just normally. Yeah. No fear. Mm. And now we here who are not sick are the ones who are panicking. Yeah. So she told me I gave them a lot of encouragement. Yeah. Because I did not fear. Mm. In fact, death did not occur to me. Yeah. I knew it soldier on. You also gave me a lot of encouragement, especially when you are now going getting into surgery. I remember Kina, my mom were panicking. Like they were at the hospital up to the moment when you were removed. But where where I was, I remember making a prayer and I was just calm. Like I knew you are going to conquer that. That I wasn't panicking as they were because I knew that's something you were going to survive and beat and conquer, you see? So you really gave up. And I think I also drew a, a lot of strength from your strength because you didn't look like someone who was dying. You looked like someone who still has so many years to live. Actually, if when you look at my laptop, I'll show it to you like the next time I come. My screen server is me, you, and my mom. The picture, the photo we took during my graduation, and it's three generations. So a colleague of mine was telling me, "At I'm wasting time. I need to add another. I need to add my generation here while you are still on earth, so that uh, we complete the photo." But I told her, "My grandmother is still here. You see, like there is nowhere you're going anytime soon. God is still holding you together for us, and." And I'd like to tell you that they've drawn so much strength also from your strength. You see, because some people, when they're sick, you can think that they're in the next minute, and then now that energy transitions into you. You see, but you have been strong for us, and I really commend you for that, because at your weakest, somehow you still wore a very brave face, and that helped everyone around you who loves you to also be strong. Yeah. So do you have any words for someone either who has just found out that they have cancer, someone who is going through the treatment process, and someone who is a survivor like yourself, encourage yourself? Do you have any words? Yes. What I would tell them mm -hmm. is that uh, cancer is treatable. Yeah. But they should see the right doctor. Yeah. Uh, Above all, mm. they should have very strong faith in God. Yeah. So if they pray, mm. they should also have prayer warriors to assist them. Mm. I must thank my relatives who helped me in prayer. Mm. I must thank my church members yeah. in Central Church Kisumu. Yeah. They were with me all the time and they were calling me. Mm. And every time they were calling for prayers in the church for me. Yeah. Even after I had come back, they continued. In fact, I told them, please, now I'm okay. <laughs> no, but you got, there's, there's never enough prayers. Uh, no, but there are others also whom they should pray for. Yeah. So I say, I'm now okay. And whenever we have a, we, I go to church and we have got a meeting on the area. Yeah. They always ask me to talk. Yeah. <laughs> tell them something. <laughs> so I always tell them God is good. Yes, you are a testament yeah. of his goodness. And then those people whose relatives have cancer, mm. they refer them to me. Yeah. I just tell them they have to trust in God. Yeah. That God heals. Yeah. They should pray. Yeah. Even pray for themselves. Yeah. More. Yeah. And pray and and believe that God is going to heal them. Yeah. And then they should also do mm -hmm. what the doctors have asked them to do. Yeah. This is what uh, the doctor told me, the surgeon. Mm. Please do what the doctors have told you to do. Yeah. So I'm doing it. I'm taking my hormonal medicine drugs mm -hmm. daily. Mm. I'm also believing in God every time I, I thank God for healing me. Yeah. 
Yeah, I believe I'm healed. Yeah. I don't have cancer. Yes, amen. I even tell people mm. that cancer is treated. Yeah. But I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. I tell them, if you want to be treated well, mm. <laughs> go to Nairobi. Yeah. Either Kenyatta Hospital, Nairobi Hospital, Aga Khan University Hospital, and Pisa Hospital. Mm. If you have the right, the right Doctor. doctors in those hospitals, mm. you are done. Yeah. But Kisumu here, I think most doctors are still are still gambling with people's lives. Yeah. But Dr. Raburu is good. Yeah. There are people he has treated and has healed. Yeah. Yeah. So the idea of going to any doctor, others are just making money. Money. A lot of money. A lot of money. And they don't follow the procedure. Mm. Because not all cancer patients mm. will go through the procedure I went. Yeah. Others start with operation. Yeah. And then to operation they go for chemo then they go for radiotherapy mm. yeah i went for chemo operation then radiotherapy yeah and radio also kills people yeah that's huge machines <laughs> 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 in fact this side of mine is still hard the, the, the ribs yeah this is still hard yeah so chemo can kill you because chemo will kill you mm. they tell you they tell you that it can kill you that they tell you it it will kill the good cells and the bad cells. Mm. The bad cells are the ones for cancer. Mm. But your cells which you should not you should retain. Mm. They also kill that one. That's why people die. But they don't tell you openly you're going to die. Yeah. But they are telling the effects of chemo. Mm. And then radiotherapy also mm. kills people. You know, it's the one that can burn you, become black also. Yeah. So when you are aware of these things, and then every time you have done it, you see the the radio doctor will also explain. If you have any side effects, you tell him. Mm. Like me, the side effect I had with the radio, mm. I had pain the whole night. It was serious pain. Mm. So when I called him, he prescribed the very, very, very painful painkiller. Pain yeah, powerful painkiller. Mm. In fact, I had bought some here and I found I could, I just threw them away yesterday. Yeah. And then there are some also some uh, gel that you are recommended to be applying on the wound. Mm. So after some time, I went to see the surgeon mm. and he told me to use aloe vera gel. Mm. So I always go for it. Mm. It's good these days I can get it in Kisumu here. Yeah. yeah. It's what I apply on the wound place. Yeah. And uh, in fact, my arm has started being flexible. Yeah. You are also, I was also given some exercise. You put your hand up yeah. the wall and you, 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 you walk up until they want this finger to be the same Aligned. as that one. Yeah. Aligned. Those ones I've been doing, but sometimes I'm lazy. Mm. But now I've started. Yeah. At least. I don't feel some pain because I was feeling it. Pain. Not really pain as such, but you know the the nini, they were cut the the muscles. Mm. So they were stiff. Yeah. But I feel they are starting to be to be soft now. Yeah. Uh, I don't feel some pain which I was feeling before. Mm. So uh, with cancer somebody has to be courageous. Yeah. You have to pray. Your friends and your mm. relatives should also help you in prayer. And I'm glad you've mentioned that part of people helping in prayer. There's actually a hymn in the SDA hymnal. Do you know it? I want the, my friends to pray for me. Mm. Can I sing for you the chorus? Please. I want my friends to pray for me To bear my tempted soul above And intercede with God for me I need the prayers of those I love. It goes like that. It's nice. Yeah, it's him for I, 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 I don't have this uh, SDA hymnal. Yeah. The one in English, I'm going to buy it. Yes, you have it in the Luo. I just have the, the Luo and the Kiswahili. Mm. Yeah. I can even buy it for you as a gift. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> you don't have the money. Who you are really sacrificing for I thank God for you and I thank God that you're still here. I believe you still have many more years to go because you have conquered cancer and it's you are in your old age so it's it's 
even the Bible describes past 70 years, years of Siju, what it doesn't describe it as very beautiful years. But I am sure as your grandchildren, we are going to make it more lively for you. We'll visit more the way you like it. And we thank God for you. Thank you so much. Yeah.